Modern computer systems and operating systems, like you and I know them, are hopelessly insecure. This is because they all have relentlessly copied the Unix model of files, where in order to make something interesting happen quite easily, they allowed any program to edit absolutely any file on your file system. Of course, they the original Unix added user protection so that you couldn't edit somebody else's files. But other than that, everything was up for grabs. This I hope hopefully should seem insecure to you because this means this is why any exe you download can zip or encrypt all of your you know pictures or valuable files demand ransom it's not a good system i'm trying to change this with serenum this was one of the initial core ideas so um Let's take a look at that as it's finally landed. It was sort of in the background, this different system of doing things, but I didn't really have time before I handmade Seattle to finish it off. So I'm going to go into this folder here. Let's look at this directory. Now, if I run the editor and I pass in new string.lbc, we will open that file. Okay. The interesting thing, this is a technical detail, but when I pass this, this does not get sent as a string to the program. Instead, the shell will find the file I'm talking about and then give a file handle directly to the editor. Okay, now say if I want to edit this file, I want to add, you know, a quick edit and I hit Control S to save. We could probably improve the error message somewhat, but here what it's saying is that we fail to write to the file. And the reason for that is because the file handle the editor received was a read-only handle. The editor did not have permission to write to this file because that should be the default. If we want to edit the file, we prepend uh, we prepend M to the beginning of the path. Now you see uh, Serenum users will notice the familiar green of the editor as now we are in edit mode and can perform our quick edit. Oops. There we go. We can open it again and we will see the edit is permanent and we can even open it in the read-only mode and we can see that this change has taken place and you know if i try to reverse this change oops without hitting a bug if i reverse this change and then uh, save we get a crash there things are still a little bit shaky building everything on the new compiler Anyway, why is this such a big innovation? Well, it means that you can actually download programs from strangers and run them on your computer. You still maybe have to worry about Spectre attacks, but you know, those shouldn't really be possible. The point is we've gotten a browser level, sort of what people expect from web apps in terms of sandboxing, just in our native, you know, our native OS interaction. If I run the editor with no args, then it actually doesn't have access to anything. Um, it has access to its own executable to load assets out of there at runtime, but you know that's a different thing. Anyway, the same thing applies to the compiler. So if we wanted to compile this program, uh, not the new screen. Let's let's compile the time program I have. So we'd run CLB, and in this case dot dot because I use stuff from outside. So we have to say play time.lbc. And then if I put runme.pb as our output file. It's not cooperating. There we go. We see the compiler will complain, hey, you need to pass M to say mutable. And if we run this, it, it will compile. 
Now you may be asking, Sam, you can't just you prepend m to the file. What if there's a file called m runme.pb? Well, I've also implemented file system name scrubbing, okay? Which is that the <laughs> the names people support on file systems are so crazy. They're way too crazy. We went from I think historically file names were more constrained constrained and then people didn't like those constraints constra uh, constraints so they um they just enabled like an arbitrary unicode string obviously that's disgusting because you need to be able to type every name so there's a scrubber that when you try to create a file with a certain name will scrub it to the correct so that it's within the bounds of what's allowed and when we load things from disk or read the names from the FAT32 file system, we scrub those as well. So we don't support uppercase. And it's not that we don't support uppercase, it's that we don't have case for file system names. You know, Windows is, as you know, case agnostic, but has case, which I find very goofy. And on Linux, you know, the file system is case sensitive. But every Linux user wants everything to be a lower case, in my experience, because dealing with case is annoying. We also ban dumb names like you can't have uh, a file that's just a bunch of dots or a bunch of underscores. So you can have a single dot, so you can have file.txt or, you know, file one, etc. But you can't have file one like that with a bunch of spaces. You can't have file uh, dot 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 is good. These these are all get scrubbed away. This will convert into this with the one dot if you try to do that. Same thing if you if you put a you know file is god or something with a big G, then this will turn into a little g, a lowercase g. Um, yeah. So I think we allow we do alphanumerics with of course uh, you know uh, long vowels like macrons so you can see here if i type long like that with the macron we support that basically all the latin and english letters we support and the numbers no symbols except underscore and dot and you may ask like hey sam what what about the normies don't the normies want to name their file, like in the future, don't the normies want to name their files with spaces in them? And I say, yes, they do. We will secretly turn those into underscores. Because what is the meaning of an underscore? The meaning of an underscore, like best file. Oops. So there's some USB problems because the kernel is running in debug. So it occasionally misses some signals because there's no, it is polling, not interrupts. Um, anyway, what what is this? This is the command line or sort of programmer version of a space, because um, a space, well, a space is used to separate arguments. And so, um, actually, I think we get the best of both worlds if we say we're going to have underscores, and then if a normally wants to name a file with spaces in them, that's that is just the same thing as underscores. So we present it to them as having spaces. And then on the command line, it would have um, underscores. Or when you have like any serious path or like lower level interface. And we'll probably have a, I definitely want to just always see the underscores because I prefer that. Um, yeah, I think that's all. I mean, it's not all. There are a bunch of other things coming in the update soon. But, um, you know, this is what I'm showing off in this video is the time program that crashed. But uh, that's not relevant to this video. More videos to come before the update.